David, you have $2 billion under management in the telecom space. You used to be a leader in the wireless industry also. Why are we having this conversation right now? Because we're talking about remote work. We're talking about getting access to education across America. There are these broadband deserts, as you call them. Why is this happening? What's keeping so much of the country from getting the infrastructure they need to be remote? Uh, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, great to have a conversation with you. Uh, I think what's clear is that the economic and education differences that we see in different parts of the country really is mirrored by uh, the dissemination of broadband and deployment of high-speed Internet access in those areas. So as we uh, think about uh, our country uh, in the 21st century and look back to the 20th century when uh, electricity was not uh, wide and far throughout the United States, uh, there were vast differences that we saw in, in, in effectively deserts in areas where uh, electricity had not had not made it there yet in the early por portion of the 20th century. And I think we're seeing the same thing uh, today when it comes to broadband. Now, in your view, why is this causing such vast economic disparities? Well, think about it. Um, if there, uh, when you think about j the job markets and uh, people that want to start businesses um, uh, or or large companies that uh, that are running their businesses, they really need to have access to high speed broadband. And if uh, there's an area where the the, the providers have not yet uh, deployed those services, those businesses are really not going to crop up and, and grow. Similarly. As you think about uh, the schools, now that we're uh, we're all working from home, we're learning from home, we're we're uh, entertaining ourselves at home. Uh, if you happen to be in a, a low economic area outside of the, the major metros, it's highly likely that you you don't have access to to high speed internet, and as a result, your children are going to be at a disadvantage when it comes to learning at home, and uh, and your businesses are going to uh, suffer if you're. Uh, if you don't have access to, to, to the web. Now, David, we know that this is a problem in terms of getting people access more generally throughout the United States, but we also know that this is a point of competition between the U.S. and China as well. How do you see that competition playing out? So uh, it's interesting. Um, notwithstanding the fact that, that we have a fairly sophisticated uh, communications infrastructure network around the United States, we're still pretty far behind, um, partly because there hasn't been um, the allocation of spectrum uh, uh, quite as there has been in other other markets. Uh, the FCC, I think, is addressing that with some auctions that are going on now and those that will go on later this year. Uh, but over time, uh, I think what's clear is if we allow the specifications and standards to be defined by someone else, we lose the uh, the control position to help guide the future of uh, broadband communications. So it, I think it's imperative that we uh, uh, jump back into a leadership role. Um, and, and I think a lot of the the conversation that we've heard about Huawei um, and and China has to do not only with security but also really that leadership and uh, defining the specifications. Speak. Speaking of leadership, you know, in 2011, uh, P President Obama at the time appointed you to the National Infrastructure Advisory Council. Uh, you, when you think about infrastructure now, you've been talking about how it's been widening inequality. How do you think that these issues are going to play out in these upcoming elections? Well, it, it remains to be seen. Uh, but I think there is a shared perspective on both sides of the aisle that uh, making sure that we're positioned to be very competitive with other countries in the world, uh, investing in our infrastructure, particularly our digital infrastructure, is has to be a priority for us to be able to live, learn, work, and play in, in, in ways that uh, um, uh, give us uh, uh, all the opportunities that the rest of the world has. Mm -hmm. um, so so my, my view is that we're going to need to see something from, from all the candidates um, that lays out exactly how we're going to both fund, invest in, and deploy uh, more advanced infrastructure, particularly of the digital. Mm -hmm. And one more real quick for you here, David. You're an infrastructure investor. You're a communications investor. What is the investment thesis here? How much money can you put to work in this industry right now? Well, it's interesting. Um, McKinsey has estimated that there will be roughly $500 billion per year 
for the next decade invested in communications infrastructure globally to get these networks ready for 5G. So that's $5 trillion. That is uh, uh, also tied to an estimate that Cisco put out that we'll see global mobile data increase 8x over the next uh, decade as well. Uh, we think that number is low, and as a result, the uh, the capital that will be deployed um, is going to be higher. Um, so as a result, there's, there is plenty of opportunity to deploy capital in this space.